Hey, Tommy, 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 Tommy Robinson. Hey, Tommy, Tommy, and so on and so on goes the chant. Um, this video today is being addressed personally to Tommy Robinson and all his supporters out there. Tommy, um, this is a message to you, um, a message of help, uh, because I have seen the, uh, the persecution that you have been enduring. I have seen the fact that the state, uh, the Masonically controlled justice system, uh, especially those individuals within, within the ACPO, which call, is the Association of Chief of Police Officers, are directly set at ending your, uh, your career, your notoriety, and everything that you stand for, no matter what. So, the reason that the video is being presented to you today uh, is a personal message to try and explain to you why you are being uh, mercilessly ground into nothing by the injustice system. And that's what it is. Please, please do not think for one moment that there is any justice in the United Kingdom that can be bought from the Law Society or the Bar Association. So the reason I'm mentioning this is that when you had your last um, venue in Manchester, I think that was on the 23rd, uh, about uh, Pandorama, um, I obviously contributed to that, um, and I see now that you're asking for contributions for your, for your legal support. So uh, this is something that's been concerning me because I have had direct experience, not only for myself, but for other individuals that I've tried to represent and represented in the past, um, and have come to a very, very firm conclusion and a firm understanding that you will not succeed in your court action if you are using those individuals that are employees of the state. Now, the Law Society and the Bar Association that maybe you are relying on as uh, arbiters of justice and leading you like a shepherd to the slaughter into these courts of justice, uh, have all taken an oath to the Crown. They've taken an, an oath to the Crown, that's the monarch in the United Kingdom, old Lizzie there, but more importantly, they've taken an oath to the Holy Roman Empire, the crown of the Holy Roman Empire, which is represented by the Pope and the Vatican. So, unfortunately for you, as you walk into one of these courts, whether it's at the Royal Courts of Justice in the Strand, whether it's a magistrate's court where 98% of all uh, cases are heard ab initio. When you are walking into these arenas, you are walking into a Roman pagan curia. It's a Roman pagan court, and there are certain assumptions or presumptions that are held fast by them in this private enclave, like a private golf club, unless you override them or rebut them. Now, what these actual 12 presumptions are uh, is not for me to go over in this video. However, basically speaking, they are a presumption of innocent, innocence. They're a presumption of impartiality by the judge. They are a, a presumption of public office and due diligence and public service. There are a, a load of these presumptions that you walk into believing that they are going to be presented to you and that they are there and they are fair and right and impartial. However, that is not the case. What you are walking into, in effect, is a microcosm of a, a Catholic church. What you are going into is a role play, a Punch and Judy show of um, something called the Sacrament of Confession. So the judge takes the responsibility and position of a, uh, of a priest. He sits there, and in many jurisdictions of the world he will be dressed in black, and will also have a white collar on, very much like a Catholic priest. What you will also then have is someone representing the state, and that individual representing the state is the prosecutor. Look at what the root word for prosecutor is in Latin. It's pro se cutix. That means standing for the flesh. So the prosecutor, in effect, is standing there and confessing your sins. The sins that you are supposed to be, have committed to the judge stroke priest. The next 
part of the Punch and Judy show is the litigation or the legal defence or the attorney that you are paying good money to help you so calledly defend yourself. But this is a nonsense, as I say, it's nothing more than a Punch and Judy show, it's nothing more than a closed shop with individuals within a private clique or cartel talking amongst themselves. The courts are only revenue generation machines. That's all they're there for. And it's an equivalent to the Middle Ages where indulgences could be purchased from the priest or a monk or the Catholic Church for sins committed by paying a price. And the price that you will have to pay is either an amount within a fine or a very, very good value for the system is for you to be imprisoned because that generates money for the system. So, what you in effect have is a presence in the court where you are not even entitled to speak unless given permission to do so. If you try and speak out of turn, that's deemed to be contempt or contemptuous. Why? Because the prosecutor is standing in your stead in your place, in that court, as speaking for you. You have no rights. You have given them all away from the time that you were born and you had the heel prick, which took the sample of blood, from when you had your feet imprinted as a few hours old child, you have become the property of the Vatican estate. So, you are born in a ward. A ward which is represented by the MP. You were born in a hospital ward. You are deemed to be a pauper, an insane, a lunatic, a delinquent, something that has got no comprehension or understanding within the framework. And what makes it even more devious is that if you try and explain without having made due preparation on this, the very fact that you're trying to argue with the judge means that he looks at you as being even more madder than the general public would be perceived as being. Because you're trying to understand the system when you obviously don't understand the system or you wouldn't be there. The only way that you should be entering into this court arena is if you are w walking in as a free man under common law and in chancery. You should not be entering into an arena whereby they are trying to bring a criminal action against you because, let's look at it like this, um, most of the things, and the, I don't know the specifics of the charges that are being brought against you, but they probably have been engineered through what's called statutory instruments. They're not acts of parliament de rigueur. Um, Statutory instruments only lie in Parliament for, I think, around 90 days on the table, and if not objected to in sufficient numbers, they become what's called basically bylaws. They're nothing more than the laws that Coca-Cola would post, or McDonald's would post in its factories as to the speed restriction on its plant, or the, 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 the times or the, the protocols expected within the workforce. It's a private members club that you've entered into, and you are deemed to be an insane persona with no rights of property standing in front of the judge. That's unless you've done something about it before you go in. So what I would just like to say to you is please, please, please get help from somewhere else. Possibly have a look at a website called freemanlegalservices.com. That can give you some pointers. But what you have to do is if you have to de-establish de -establish yourself. You have to cut your ties with the state. If you go into the court, if you go into their courtroom, and when asked to give your name, your address, or your date of birth, and if you have done this, or you do this on the 22nd, or whenever your court case is, what you have done is automatically acceded, you have automatically understood, whether consciously or not, the terms of the papal bulls beginning with unum sanctum and the three others that are indicative of total control by the sovereign. Now, what you've got to further understand, and I know there's a lot to deal with here, but it's worth me trying to get this message across to you, because I've tried other, other means or other avenues via email or other contacts, and they fail to deliver this message. So this is why I'm resorting to putting it out on YouTube today. 
that under the Sestui Key V Act of 1668, Section 4, please go and have a look at it, it's on the government website, it states basically that an individual is deemed to be dispossessed of his estate if he is deemed to be what's called missing or lost at sea, unless he makes full claim to the contrary. Now, the state, the enemies that are against you, it isn't the Social Workers' Party, it isn't the Trades Union Congress, it isn't Antifa, it isn't the, uh, the, the so-called left, the fascists on the street. What it is primarily that is looking to gun you down is the state. So define your enemy. Your enemy is to be defined as the global Masonic but lodge-controlled agenda that runs firmly out of the United Kingdom and the City of London in particular. Okay? There are 10,000 lodges in the United Kingdom for all of you out there who may not know. On an average there are 100 Masonic members per lodge, not counting those uh, their wives or associates. So, that means there are around about 1 million Freemasons in positions of control within the United Kingdom. 64 million population, 1 in 64. However, let's take out all those under, say, the age of 23, 24, 25, who don't join a lodge or won't be encouraged to. Let's take all those over the age of 75 or 80 who are retired. Let's take out mainly the Muslim population that aren't invited in. Let's take away all the women that predominantly aren't invited in. So we're down now maybe to a sort of 1 in 20. So 1 in 20 control very, very important choke points. The Royal Courts of Justice has their own Masonic Lodge. The Treasury has its own Lodge. The Bank of England has its own Lodge. The Association of Chief of Police Officers, all Masonic to a 100th degree. Because you don't get to join unless you've been bloodied. And these are the people that are coming after you. People like uh, Cressida Dick from the Dragon School in Oxford. Ask yourself, how does someone who is, no, big, no skin off my nose, a lesbian, ending up in this most, most uh, shall we say, profound and most high profile and prestigious place for, for um, the, the, the policing of the United Kingdom, um, when there are hundreds and thousands of others to choose from. There's a process of selection. There's a process of selectioning. So to continue with the, the, the situation that you're in and what's enclosing you here, let's look very quickly at some of the expressions. The minister, the minister of justice. Ministers are all to do with the Catholic Church and the Vatican. Ministers administer ministries. And ministries, a minister of the faith, is nothing more than a priest. Look at the word clerk or clerk, the clerk of the court. Clerk comes from the word cleric or clericus, which means a religious appointment by a priest or a pope. Let's also look at the word metropolitan or metropol excuse me, metropolitan borough. Metropolitan a borough means a bishopric, or an area or jurisdiction in the control of a bishop. So, we've, we've covered many of these parts, and I've covered them in many parts of videos before. Uh, even on the coin of the realm, you've got fide defensor, which means defender of the faith. That's on every coin of the realm. It was a, uh, a, a Latin tag, or strapline, that was invented or given to Henry VIII when he was welcomed back into the fold after he'd been excommunicated by the Pope. So, from the time of Henry VIII up until the present time, we are in a Vatican-controlled Holy Roman Empire region. And the Queen and the monarchy are masquerading as a Protestant monarchy in, should we say, uh, conflict with with Rome. However, look at all the regalia they wear, whether it's the Order of the Garter, where it's the, the cross of the Knights of St. John uh, or of Jerusalem. Look at all this regalia that they wear. It's all based on Catholic um, tribal uh, graffiti. All the marks, all the sigils, all the seals, all the symbols that they wear are all Christian, Vatican-based. 
So what this means is they have to pay for the privilege of using them. And if they have to pay, that's a totem that they are well and firmly established within the Catholic Vatican global cabal. So what more else do I have to say on this matter? Uh, you must enter the court as a man. These are the solutions open to you. You must enter as a man and you must enter under chancery court status. Equity Chancery Division. You should not be going into a normal Crown Court or a Royal Court of Justice setting without first clarifying to the judge what is the status and the nature of the court that I'm in here today. Is this a court of record? Um, because there is only one way that you can be in a court under common law jurisdiction. And that is only on the basis that you have injured another man, you have injured or damaged his goods or property, or you have misrepresented in, his con uh, sorry, in your contracts. So there has to be you, the man, as the defendant, and there has to be an individual as a plaintiff. What I would suggest to you, that hate speech, hate crime, whatever this is that you are being accused of, is a victimless crime. Because, just like the laws of slander and defamation, you cannot defame, you cannot slander a group of individuals. It's a basic premise and it's a basic tenet of uh, English law or English common law. So, what I would suggest to you, uh, Tommy, if you can get in touch with me, then please do so and I can give you some guidance. I don't think I can uh, help you at all prior to the 22nd, it's a little bit of short notice. Um, the, the other point that I must uh, make to you is, one final thing, is that the, 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 the uh, lawyer or the barrister that you are involved with in the court in no way have the right or the permission to compromise the judge. The judge is there with a... a um, um, a, a ruling and a pre-decided um, judgment. That will not be overturned and the, 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 the lawyer and the member of the Bar Council has taken an oath of office not to embarrass the court. Not to embarrass the court or compromise the judge in any way. So even if the, 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 the brief that you've got wanted to stand up and tell it as it is, he couldn't. He might be able to get it for one, one or a few minutes, but what would happen after that is the court would be adjourned and the individual would be penalised. How he would be penalised is not directly by the Law Society or the Bar Council defrocking him, but what would happen is he would have his indemnity insurance pulled, and because he would have no public liability insurance, he wouldn't be able to practice law. So, to all intents and purposes, it would look as if uh, it was just some uh, transgression that had brought that about uh, on behalf of his, uh, his uh, double dealings with the insurance company. But in effect, they would, they would prevent him from practicing law. Please also remember that unless you prove yourself to be a man alive, the only question that the judge has been uh, or has asked before you walk into that court, and this has been asked of the clerk of the court, and that question is, has this man proved himself to be alive? If the answer is no, then you can dance a jig for the rest of your days. You'll go nowhere. Because, maybe you don't know this, but within the Masonic Orders, the first three degrees are all to do with resurrection and being brought back to life. First degree is done in darkness. Second degree is done in light. The third degree is done from going from dark into light. And that is the ritual of the resurrection of the man as per Seti Kive or Sesri Kive, 1666, section 4, brought back to life and having property rights and interests. So, I'll leave it for there for now. Um, please get in contact with me if you can. I'll put some of the links down below and I would be happy to try and help you uh, to demobilize, demolish this corrupt and inept criminal
justice or injustice system that masquerades as uh, a, a, a false bill of goods for every citizen, every individual that walks within uh, the United Kingdom. So let's see if we can remedy it. Remedy it. Let's bring some solutions together. Thank you.